Welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022 in Bucharest in Romania, where we're here in the last week. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Mario Manovic, who is the director of ITU's Radio Communication Bureau and has recently been re-elected to that same position. Mario, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by, let's talk about ITU as a whole. How would you describe ITU's role in the world today? Well, I think that uh Bringing connectivity to all, that is what uh, a bit of our motto today, uh, it's our main role. But connectivity today doesn't mean only communicate in people as it was in the old times. Connectivity today means also uh, getting people into the digital economy, getting uh, societies integrated uh, uh, through the communications applications and everything we use today uh, to learn, uh, to, go, to inform ourselves, uh, to, to even interact with the government, uh, run through the ICT networks. So uh, the main role of the ITU is to make it all happen seamlessly across the world and to bring this connectivity to every inhabitant in the planet, regardless of where they are and regardless of their means, which is the most important aspect of it. And what are your priorities as Director of Radio Communication Bureau as you're coming in now for your second term? Well, my first priority is to make sure that the World Radio Communication Conference that is going to be held next year is successful. As you know, this conference is the one that uh, updates the radio regulations, which is one of the oldest intergovernmental treaty uh, that governs the use of uh, the spectrum and the satellite orbits uh, around the world. So uh, this is the, the first priority, but we also have to continue developing standards uh, in order for everybody to be able to use equipment and to communicate uh, in the best possible way with the least uh, possible price. And of course, uh, to bring uh, to everybody around the world the possibilities of doing so by disseminating information, uh, making people aware of the, of the possible uses and how to benefit from all these uh, services and products that we develop. Now, beyond uh, WRC 23, it seems incredible that uh, it feels a, a, only a few moments ago we were at WRC 19 in uh, few seconds it seems to have gone as I say to, we're, we're about to have it in Dubai next year mm -hmm. how can the ITU radio communication sector known in the field as ITU are uh, help to meet sustainable development goals and improve people's lives the first goal we contribute to is the uh, building uh, infrastructure resilient infrastructure in terms of communication but this is only the basis for it uh, then uh, we contribute to almost all other uh, SDGs because uh, we help agriculture by bringing uh, this connectivity to the rural areas and by helping them uh, measuring uh, the rain and the, the amount of uh, the fertil fertilizer that they need in their lands and all these uh, applications that we have with the Internet of Things. Uh, we help uh, education with the education and uh, health and uh, government services and uh, even protect the planet uh, through that because all the satellites uh, that observe the earth they can prevent uh, climate change they can tell us about uh, possible disasters and catastrophes to prevent them and then to help mitigate them so we are uh, contributing nearly to all the sdgs uh, because everything today runs through uh, our networks uh, and uh, more and more wirelessly so it's more and more not only telecommunications or ICTs, but also wireless communication. So using the radio waves, using satellites, using all the radio communication devices around the world. Now, not that the future is ever certain, but we seem to be facing more of an uncertain future than ever nowadays. I wanted to ask you, how do you intend to keep the ITU radio communication sector relevant and effective? Well, the most important aspect, and this is what I... Uh, had as a priority since I, first, uh, I was first elected in 2018, is that everybody takes part in our activities and everybody feels ownership about what we develop all together. So it's very important that all countries uh, come to our activities, join our activities, participate in the decision making, participate in the development of, uh, of the studies and the new technologies that we are going to put out there and uh, they all uh, are part of this uh, community, this family 
that is the ITUR that you mentioned a while ago. So there was a tendency some decades ago that only developed countries and uh, you know, uh, powerful economies would be part of this. And developing countries were very passive, uh, just inheriting the decisions that were made. Now they are more and more integrated into our work. They are more and more participating from our work. This was my, my objective. Coming myself from a developing country, for me, this was key. And uh, there are more and more countries around the world that have understood the importance of this. And now that's a consequence that we have now in WRCs, 4,000 people, easily. No? Because everybody has uh, understood the importance of it and the importance of participating in, in the process. Not only for the decision making, but the whole process that leads to the decision making. Uh, if you are not there, then your voice is not heard. Your needs are not reflected into the proposals that are going to be approved at the conference. So the most important thing for our relevance is to keep our expertise, of course, to keep our community active, but to put everybody in the, in the process. Finally, as I mentioned before, you're going to be embarking on a new four-year term. How have your insights of the last four years shaped your view of the radio communication technologies around the globe? The last four years were marked by the COVID-19 pandemic. So this was a huge impact uh, after, luckily after the WRC 19 that you mentioned in, in Sham Sheikh. So we could have the conference and we could have it uh, successfully. And then uh, the COVID uh, stroke. So uh, maybe other communities would have been left uh, uh, totally um, you know, resourceless with this. But uh, the, the radio communication community is, uh, endured this uh, pandemic and we continued our work and we continued our, our studies and our development of proposals for the next conference in a, in a virtual manner, which is a very difficult uh, way of doing it because there is a lot of negotiation and a lot of uh, compromising in order to, to put all countries in agreement on a given solution. And these kind of things is very difficult to be done through virtual means. But uh, despite that, uh, we advanced uh, a lot. And then probably uh, this year, that is a normal year, let's, we, will, we will see there. So to answer your question directly, my view is that the humanity uh, is so convinced or countries around the world are, are so convinced of the importance of this uh, for the sake of humanity and for the future of humanity that they are very, they cherish it and they don't want it to break or to get lost or to, you know, or to slow down. So this is the best proof that this treaty that I mentioned to you, the, the radio regulations, is 116 years old and it was never, it was never, uh, let's say, abandoned. It was never violated, if you want, despite the world wars and the, the um, tensions that we have, uh, geopolitical tensions that we have around the world. This, everybody sees it as above all these things because it's, uh, it's the only way that we can continue. If, uh, if you don't obey by the radio regulations, your communications will be interfered by others, you will be interfering somebody else. So the only way that it works is if everybody goes by it. And everybody has this very clear. So this is a source of pride of the baby we have uh, generated in the ITU that is still alive and, and growing uh, steadily. We look forward to uh, seeing your progress over the next four years too. And uh, congratulations uh, Thank you very for, much. Uh, for renewing your, uh, your mandate uh, very successfully, I can say. So um, thank you very much for being with us in the studio and, and uh, let's catch up again very soon. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure and I'm at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you.